class. Whoops. So we are going to be wrapping up chapter eight. We've been looking at mental health, anxiety, and stress and depression. So you guys that are at home, you need to watch this video as I go through the lessons. Now, some of you did not watch the movie Out of the Darkness. Um, so if you didn't watch that, I went ahead and reloaded it again on Google Classroom. So you can see um, it's recorded from like my screen. I saw it in the corner of it. I'm talking a little bit. So if you didn't watch that, it's really important that you do watch it, okay? Because uh, a lot of things we're talking about today will refer back to that. So you guys that are at home, um, if you haven't watched Out of the Darkness because you've had some technical difficulties, um, I have reloaded that video in there. So make sure you watch it. Tomorrow, you are going to have a quick, simple test, okay? I'll cover the test questions. I've already covered them several times before. But I'll cover those test questions um, because we have to have our test over anxiety and teen depression, okay? Um, and it'll be simple. You're going to probably A, B, C, or D, and a couple, maybe a couple essays. Just really, really short. So it needs to be easy for me to grade as well, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this because it's just a portion that I have to cover. Anxiety and teen depression. And then remind me to get attendance at the end, okay? Because we'll have some leftover time that me and you can talk to. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go through this really quick because we've already watched it, we've already seen it in the other videos that we watched, but now Coach Harris has to talk about it. So what is anxiety? You saw this on the Brain Pop video. It's closer to that word, what? I heard it. Stress, yes, stress and anxiety kind of go hand in hand, okay? Sometimes stress will lead to anxiety. Sometimes you can get depressed from it because it's just overwhelming and it's too much for you. So anxiety is the condition, um, of feeling uneasy or worried about what might happen. It's like when you're worried about what's going to happen, the what if, the what if, the what if. Okay, what if this happens or what if that happens? Or it's just that uneasy feeling of nervousness, okay? Or that one that you can't control. You're always anxious about something, okay? Um, occasional anxiety in life is natural. We all experience it. We get nervous when we're about to do something. Um, or if you're starting at the start line, or you're getting ready to give a speech, or maybe you're getting ready to go do your driver's test or something like that. Or you know that you got in trouble and your parents are about to come home, you know? And you did something you weren't supposed to do. You gotta break that news to them, or you don't want them to find out. Sometimes you get nervous about that. We have those two types of stress that are what? Who remembers? Eustress or wait, stress, I thought. Eustress, uh-huh. And eustress. And distress, yes. Eustress and distress. You stress is the woo kind of stress that makes you feel what? Excited. Excited. Makes you feel pretty good, excited. Yes, that, that stress kind of pumps through your veins. It's like, yes, I'm getting ready to do this. Let's, let's get it going, okay? But the distress is the what kind? It's the negative stress, okay? The negative stress, okay? That makes you uneasy and uncomfortable and makes you feel bad, okay? So you have the positive stress and the negative stress. There's two types, so you want to know that for tomorrow. You stress, think about woohoo, you stress, and then distress down, okay? So, occasional anxiety in life is natural. We've all experienced it before. Some symptoms of anxiety include feelings of fear. You're afraid. You're afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of what might happen, okay? Um, some of the symptoms you're going to see. Perspiration. Sometimes you see people that are giving speeches. They're, they're talking in front of people, and you see they're what? You see their armpits all wet. You see that their, your shirt will turn a different color. Your armpits are all sweat. You'll feel sweat running down your sides. Sometimes it's running down your thighs. Sometimes it's running down your forehead, okay? Sometimes your palms are all wet and sweaty and clammy, okay? Because your body responds to that anxiety, okay? So perspiration, sometimes you do what? You get really, you're really shaky. You start trembling. You get nervous. Sometimes you're restless. You can't sleep. You keep thinking about something. Sometimes your muscles are really, really tense, okay? Your heart rate begins to do what? It begins to beat faster. It speeds up. Sometimes when your heart speeds up, then you feel what? Lightheaded. You get a little dizzy sometimes. All these things kind of affect one affects the other. Shortness of breath, because normally you're like, you're what? You're breathing out. Your respiration is going faster. Faster, yeah, it's kind of weird behind the mask. You can't see all the expressive things, but you breathe a little faster, okay? So then sometimes you feel shortness of breath. Sometimes people's chests get really what? Tight. Get really tight, okay? These are some of the signs, some of the symptoms of anxiety. Your, your chest tightens up, your heart beats fast, your body gets sweaty, you get dizzy, you get lightheaded, okay? Anxiety, all right? So, 
Um, perfection can lead to frustration and unhappiness. So we're not going to get into the different like OCD and perfectionism and all those kind of things that we'd be here for the rest of the class period. So I'm going to move on so we understand the symptoms, the signs and symptoms of anxiety, okay? Two types of stress are? De stress and distress. De stress and distress. Woohoo stress and woo -hoo boo stress, okay? You hoo and boo. <laughs> that was funny, wasn't it? Nobody's laughing. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So strategies for coping with anxiety. And again, guys, I know this is easier said than done. We can tell you this all day. I know it's easier said than done when you're living it. Okay. So use stress management techniques. Um, in the in the brain pop video, they talk about redirecting that energy into something positive. Um, relax. Well, how do you relax? You relax to doing what? Ah, breathing, taking how many breaths? Five to, ten. Five to ten nice deep breaths in your nose and out your mouth and trying to relax. And so when you take those deep breaths, what happens to those muscles? They, they go from being tense to they relax, they loosen up, okay? And also when you take those deep breaths, we know this from cross country, I'll tell you when you feel like you're getting out of breath, you take a deep breath and it slows your what down? Heart slows your heart rate down okay slows your heart rate down so you take those five to ten deep breaths and that slows your heart rate down and it helps you to relax a little bit okay um, it's also good to get out and get some fresh air get out and get fresh air okay so relax easier said than done but the breathing is one of the main keys they always say take a deep breath Take a deep breath, even professionals, you'll hear them tell you, take a deep breath. Hey, come here, come here, take a deep breath. Slow your breathing down, calm down. You know, this those things to bring you from up here to down here. We want to try to settle the heart and the mind, all those kind of things that are going kind of haywire, okay? And then laughing is so good. I've taught with a lot of kids that were going through things and I made them laugh in some kind of way. And that laugh just kind of brushed the edge off a little bit to get them to kind of calm down and relax, okay? So when you can find where you can chuckle about something, just laugh a little bit, it helps with whatever you're experiencing, okay? Um, maintaining a positive outlook, okay? Regardless of how dark things are, um, there's always light at the end of the what? Is that cliche? So there's light at the end of the? Tunnel. Try to focus on the positive things. And then the other key is, of course, we always tell you to seek out for what? Help. To get help. Always get help. And again, sometimes you want to hide that you're going through things. You don't want anybody to know. And so a lot of kids will try to hide and cover up your situations. Okay. But the best thing is, is to really just seek out help. You know, whether you're talking to a teacher, a counselor, somebody that you can trust. Okay. Um, remember. Alcohol, drugs, and tobacco only provide a keyword. They only provide a temporary, it's a short window. A temporary, and it's also a false sense of relaxation. So for a short moment, you know, alcohol may feel good. For a short moment, that drag off a cigarette might feel good. For a short moment, that drug may feel good. But it's only a short moment that it feels good, but it also provides a false sense of relaxation. Why? because you just developed a new problem when you start doing any type of drug or alcohol unless it's been prescribed by a doctor, okay? So alcohol, and a lot of times when kids are going through things, they may turn to drugs, they may turn to alcohol, they may start smoking cigarettes, and we'll learn as we get to those subjects. But it's a false sense of security, relaxation. It makes me feel better, but it's only temporary. So then you wanna go back and do it again you stop, the problem comes back, you go back and do it again. So now you're juggling with the problem and then a new problem that you just developed because now you decided to use alcohol to mask, to cover up the problem that you're going through, whether it's anxiety or depression, okay? Do we get that? So it's only temporary and it's false. It's not a way to help you, okay? So let's continue. So now we're looking at depression, all right? So what is depression? Okay, depression. So nearly everyone has been sad before. Anybody in here been sad about something in life? Oh, I'm sure everybody's been sad about something. I've been sad. I was just sad. I'm sad right now because my family's leaving. Okay, you've been in a sad mood. Okay, or something's happened that's made you really sad. Okay. Um, hey, there goes the district champion. Uh, anyway, makes you sad for the last, you know, 
for a while because these are natural feelings. It's okay for us to get sad, okay? It's okay for you to be sad about stuff. If you didn't get sad, we would, wouldn't think that you're human. We'd think something was wrong, something's going on. You didn't have those type of emotions happening sometimes. Okay, so we can manage those things. We always talk about journaling, writing your feelings down, writing down what you're going through. So people don't like to write. You also see people that are expressive in art. They like to draw, put things on paper. They like to express it through artwork and pictures, things like that. And then also helping somebody else, okay, that's maybe going through a tough time or just doing a good volunteer service or helping a neighbor with their trash or anything at all. Just a, a type of voluntary or helping. We call it service, okay, serving somebody else, okay. But um, those are for just short periods when you've got something going on, when you're sad about something. But depression is much stronger than this occasional sad mood, and it's not easy to manage, all right? It is a prolonged, means it's a what? Long time. It's a prolonged feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, and sadness, okay? It just doesn't go away. It feels like you're carrying the what on your shoulders? It feels like you're carrying the weight, like you're carrying the world on your shoulders. You know, you just feel so heavy. I always think about depression as being super heavy and I can't bear it. Why can't I bear it? Because we weren't meant to bear it, that's why. We weren't made to bear those kind of things. Yes, we are made to go through situations. It's okay to grieve and to hurt for something, but you don't wanna stay there too long, okay? So we'll talk about that next. So we have two types of depression, okay? We have two types. We have reactive depression, and then we have major depression. So reactive depression is just that we talked about responding and reacting a while back. So reactive depression is a response. That means you are responding to something that has occurred in your life, whether you've lost a loved one. And we know that some people have lost loved ones and that's a difficult thing, especially during COVID. Okay, whether you've lost a loved one um, or maybe you've lost a pet, Maybe your parents have separated or they've divorced. Sometimes kids think that they're the cause of that and it's never a child's fault. You have to always know that it's never your fault. You know, that's those adults that are going through something, okay? Um, maybe it's just parents, one here and one there, you gotta deal with that. Maybe there's other things going on in life that you have to deal with and it's, it's, it's difficult, okay? So the response is that you go through a temporary, a short, Term depression you react to the situation you're depressed for a while but eventually you find ways to cope when you've lost a loved one you don't ever say that you get over it but you learn how to deal with it you learn how to realize okay this person's not gonna be back in my life but yet you learn how to cope and deal and move forward in a positive manner okay um, eventually it goes away and the person finds ways to manage his or her response to that event okay you learn how to move forward, okay? We don't, we don't just say you get over it, okay? But you learn how to move forward and how to live even though that has happened to you. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so that is reactive. But major depression occurs when you don't recover and you don't know how to move forward, okay? It's more severe and can develop from reactive depression chemical imbalances, or a genetic tendency. If you've had your family members in your family that have dealt with depression, a lot of times you can be genetically predispositioned to be a person that deals with depression as well, okay? Um, so then it becomes a mental condition that requires treatment. That means you have to get help from it, okay? And Coach Harris, um, in my early 20s, I went through severe, severe, severe um, depression. I went to the point to where Coach Harris didn't, want, didn't like herself. I didn't want to live. The things that I was experiencing, I was a, a, a young mom, and I was married, and I was overseas. And I felt like, again, the weight was on my, the whole world was on my shoulders, you know. And I would go hide in the closet. Um, I did things that just just kept me separated. I didn't want to be around. I didn't want to go to work. You know, I just wanted to sleep all the time. I wanted to just sleep. I knew if I slept, I didn't have to face what? I didn't have to face my problems. I didn't have to face what I was going through because my heart was so broken and I hurt so bad that I didn't want to face anything. I just wanted to sleep all the time. But I had a little girl to take care of. And so I remember being in Germany and over there, you know, 
I, you can, you know, Autobahn, you could drive really, really fast. And Coach Harris was, I wasn't Coach Harris then, I was Sergeant Harris. And I'm driving and I'm going across this bridge. And I'm, you know, if there's a bridge, that means there's well on both sides. There's water, water on both sides. So I remember in my car and I'm driving, I remember just taking my car up to like 110 miles per hour. Okay, and in the back of my mind, it's like, I'm just gonna turn it. I'm just gonna turn the wheel. I'm just gonna turn it. I remember just driving, because I just, I didn't, the depression was so great and it was so hard to deal with. I just wanted to drive off the bridge. I just didn't want to face anything anymore. And so I got to the point, 110 miles per hour. I'm thinking in my mind, you know, I gotta feel my body. And I'm like, I'm just gonna turn. I'm just gonna turn. I'm just, just like I'm doing right now, because I can literally take myself back to that place where I was, because I lived it. And just driving and holding onto the steering wheel, having my foot on the gas, and I was just driving. And I'm thinking in my mind, just turn, just turn, just turn, just do it, just do it, just do it. But something in the back of my mind said, what about ambrosia? And I heard this little whisper, what about ambrosia? And as I was driving, and you know, I can remember even just with my eyes, it was a straight bread, I remember just closing my eyes, and what about ambrosia? And I remember just saying, <gasps> you know, and that was how I responded. And ambrosia was my daughter. She was little at the time. She was, she was 28 now, but she was a little girl at the time. And I remember just taking my foot off the gas and just slowing down, just, just breathing like, oh my God, I've, I've got to take care of ambrosia. But I, I, I think about her, so she's what saved my life because like I said, I didn't want to face what I was going through. It was just so hard. So I understand what it's like to face depression and to live through depression. And so at that time, I was Sergeant Harris. Sergeant Harris had to get some help. I went from 100 and like 35, 40 pounds to about 119 pounds because when I was depressed, I couldn't eat. I couldn't swallow. I had a hard time swallowing. And just because that was just how I dealt with it. So I understand how depression can affect you. It pushed me to a place to where I didn't want to, I didn't want to be awake. I wanted to sleep my life away at that time. It was hard. Does that make sense? Yeah? Are y'all tracking? Okay. Um, I got some help. Um, I was on a, on a medication for a very short time and I ended up not, not needing it and learning how to, long story short, going through the situation and it took a long time, but I got through it and I dealt with it and I'm still here. So yeah, you can, you can get through it, you can recover. Um, so mine was a major factor just because of the life experience that I was going through at that time and not wanting to live as a terrible situation and wanting to take your own life because at that point, that's where I was. I wanted to turn the steering wheel and just drive off the bridge because I didn't want to face it. But I'm so glad that I didn't. So anyway, it turned into a medical condition. I had to get help and I got some help. So that's why I'm still sitting here today. So, and that was, you know, 20 some years ago. So I've lived it before and you have to get help. And so if you're going through anything, you really do have to get some external help. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So what all that happened when you were in your teens? No, no, baby, I was in my twenties. I was in I was already in military service. I already had my first my first child. I was married, had my baby girl. But there were some things that had happened in my life at that time that were so painful and so weighty that I just didn't want to face it and I didn't want to deal with it. I hated myself. I hated the way I felt about me. I hated what I was going through. And all those things became this really heavy, heavy weights that I felt like I was carrying around. And I just remember, I, I, I can't, I just can't, I just can't, I can't do this anymore. And so I was, like I said, I was driving and I just wanted to, whew, just wanted to go. And was that when you were like in your 20s? And I was in my 20s, yeah. I was in my early 20s. And so just a young girl, still young. And again, just really, really realizing that I needed to get help. And, um, and then again, just thinking about taking care of my daughter. You know, and I'm so glad that, that I did. So so we understand that reactive depression, you're reacting to a situation, something that occurs, and then major depression is something that is continual. It, it doesn't go away. You've got to get help with it, okay? All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. So symptoms of teen depression, okay? Yes, sir? Yeah, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, because you need this for your test tomorrow. Um, many young people who are suffering from depression do not act sad or seem outwardly different to their family or friends. In that video, the parents didn't even really realize that, that she was going through depression like that, did they? Remember them talking? If you watch the video, you'll know that they're saying, we didn't realize how bad this was. We you know, maybe thought she was just you know, sad, having you know, rough days here or there. But a lot of times, teens are good at doing what? 
hiding, covering things up. Like I was telling you guys a couple of days ago, last week I was saying sometimes they'll say, how y'all doing? Huh? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. As you leave response, I'm okay. I'm good. I had a kiddo today and I said, you know, I said, how are you doing? And she just looked at me. I said, how are you doing? And this is just me talking to her. I said, how are you doing? And she just looked at me, and as I kept asking her, I just saw her eyes just welled up with tears. I'm like, come here, come over here, you know, because that, that's, what, that's what we're supposed to do. And I, I hate this COVID thing, you know, they always tell you that you can't touch kids, you can't hug kids. And sometimes a hug is the, one of the most valuable things that a, a kid has at this moment, you know what I mean? Because it's just the, the human relation and human touch is so important. And sometimes just, just a hug, just to say, hey, I'm here. For you just feeling that human connection it does something it kind of breaks down the barrier it makes that person feel like hey I, I i do need to be here i am valuable you know she does care or he does care you know and so with COVID, they say oh you can't hug you can't do this you can't you know give you know your students a hug if they need it and that's a really hard thing and sometimes i i struggle with that and sometimes you know break the rules on that one because it's so important. It's just so, so important. So anyway, continuing. Symptoms, symptoms. Irritable and restless mood, okay? You don't want to be bothered. Just leave me alone. I just don't, I just don't want to today. I, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. Okay, withdrawal from friends and family and activities, okay? And that's when you enjoy doing things and now you don't want to do it anymore. I don't feel like it. I just don't want to. I just don't want to go. No, I don't want to. You begin to do what with yourself? Distance. Distance isolate isolate yes you begin to distance yourself from people you begin to isolate yourself okay you don't want to be around anybody those are symptoms okay change in appetite or weight i know that because i experienced it i didn't have an appetite i felt like i would gag on food you know i went from being this fit chick to to frail and skinny because i couldn't eat um it just felt like i was choking when i tried to swallow and other people they eat a lot some people are that are depressed they'll eat all the time where the others don't eat, it just depends, okay? So, but your appetite changes, so therefore your weight changes, you're gonna gain weight or lose weight, okay? And then some people will end up developing eating disorders, which we're gonna look at too, um, and you can hide those as well, and we'll talk about that later. Um, a feeling of worthlessness, where you don't feel like you're valuable, you don't feel like you deserve to be here, you deserve to live, okay? And that is something that you really, you really have to reach out and get help for. And then a sense of hopelessness. There is no hope. You know, I felt for the moment, and when I was on that bridge, I felt like I didn't have any hope. I felt totally helpless, like nobody was going to be able to help me. I felt hopeless, and you know, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel valuable at that time. That small little voice. Sometimes you have to listen to that still, small, positive voice in the back of your mind that's saying that you are valuable, you are needed, and we do need you here. Okay. So let's continue. We're almost done. And again, a lot of things are easier said than what? Done. A lot of the times are the oh, yeah easier said than done. So let's get to the very last one. And I know I just made it small. I'm getting help for anxiety and depression. Okay. Again, talking with supportive people parents or a trusted adult and then sometimes we have families that we call dysfunctional families okay so not everyone has the perfect family at home sometimes you go to a place where there's cussing and fussing and screaming sometimes you have alcoholic parents sometimes you have parents that are um, dealing with drugs and other situations sometimes there are if you're living in a situation that is not a healthy home okay so you when you go home you're not going to a loving, inviting environment. You're going home to a situation, put that phone up. You're going home to a situation that is detrimental to you. And because of the home situation, it causes you to be anxious because some kids are afraid to go home, okay? Um, I'll tell you a really short story that I don't have a phone when I get through this, but I had a kiddo um, when I was a teacher in a different district and I was a third grade teacher. And long story short, I know I'm, mm, nah, never mind. Long story short, I used to take this kid home with me. He would, he would come home with me. And the mom, um, mom told me all that, that had, had gone on, but long story short, kid had been through an abusive situation. Um, so he felt safe. He used to always want to stay after school. He never wanted, he didn't want to go home. He's like, can I help you? Can we do this? Can I help you clean the classroom? Can I do this? Can I put papers away? He always wanted to help me. He didn't want to go home. 
Long story short, I found out what was going on. Kiddo was in an abusive situation. So I started bringing him home to hang out with my kids on the weekends. And we got to the point to where he'd spend the whole summer with me. Um, was I breaking the rules? Absolutely, because I had a kid, I'm a teacher, and I had a kid in my classroom that I'm taking home in my personal car to my house, you know. Um, but it was a way of escape for that child. It was a way to give that mom a time to breathe and then away from a rough situation. So I just, you know, he ended up, ended up being friends with my son for a long time. But legally, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to put a kid in my car and take him home with me. But in order to help that kiddo and just didn't, you know, I knew something was wrong. Long story short, that's how you save a kid's life sometimes. And I think that for those two years that I had him coming home with me and spending summer times with us and stuff, I really think that 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 was a part of saving that kiddo's life. So um, talking with someone that, that can help you, a trusted adult. Okay, because sometimes you do have dysfunctional families, and sometimes there are, there are things that are going on at home that you don't have any control over. Okay, sometimes things are happening to you that shouldn't be happening, that you don't have any control over. Okay, and so sometimes your anxiety or stress is because of your home life, and you escape when you get to where? You get to school. Yeah. And so, talking to a counselor, we've got wonderful counselors here, um, school psychologists, a healthcare professional if you've got to get to the doctor when you really need to reach out for additional help. Um, get more physical activity. Why do you need to exercise? Do you feel like exercising when you're depressed? No. No, you don't because you feel heavy. You feel totally drained. You just want to sleep. I wanted to sleep my life away. <laughs> um, but you feel drained and you feel heavy. But exercise is so important because it releases what? Who knows? Ah, yeah. Say it louder. Hormones. Hormones, chemicals. It releases those hormones, those chemicals in the brain. Okay? Stimulate those healthy hormones in the brain, those chemicals and those endorphins, okay, that help combat depression. Okay? So act, physical activity is so good for anybody that's going through depression. It may not feel good at the moment, but once you get through it, it helps so much. So any, any um, professional expert will tell you that exercise is vital. It's a vital key, movement, 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 okay? And then volunteering, um, doing something to help other people. If you remember watching the video, she found something that made her feel like she had a sense of purpose in life. She's like, I found my purpose. If you watch the video of Out of the Darkness, she found something and she felt like she was valuable. Well, she was valuable because we're all valuable. Does that make sense? Okay, good. And that was the last one for this. Again, just reaching out for help. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but we really, really, we, we want you guys to come to us because I know that we're able to give you or get you to the help that you need, okay? So I'm gonna pause right there. If you wanna stand up and stretch for the moment, we gotta talk about resiliency. Resiliency is bouncing back, okay? So I'm okay, so the next part, being a resilient teenager. And basically, this is really simple. If you watched the video that I uploaded a while back, um, it was help, I'm stressed. It talked that you saw where they hit the little thing and it would bounce back. You hit it, you bounce back. Resiliency is being able to bounce back from a difficult situation or a crisis, something that you've experienced in life. Obviously, Coach Harris bounced back from what I was going through because I'm still here. I made it. I survived. Okay, it wasn't. It was. It was long, but it wasn't forever. And I learned how to recover. Okay, and I'm still here. So I showed some resiliency. I dealt with what I was going through and got some help, and I bounced back. Um, at the time, see that guy standing there. I felt like I had three of those guys standing there and one was laying on my chest and crushing me. That's how heavy the weight felt. So if you can imagine this guy here crushing you and I was like a little tiny little thing. That's how small I felt with all the weight that, was, that I was carrying. So yeah. So resiliency, the ability to adapt effectively and recover from disappointment. Disappointment hurts when you're disappointed about something. Okay, difficulty and a crisis. When you're able to recover from those things, you're able to bounce back. Resilient people are able to handle adversity in healthy ways. It means you're not 
harming yourself. You're not harming somebody else. You're not tearing the house down. Okay, you want to punch something, punch a pillow. You want to get the energy out, go and punch your pillow. You know, achieve long-term success despite of negative circumstances. So you're able to be successful regardless of what you've gone through. How many of you have seen the movie um, uh, The Pursuit of Happiness? Because we are going to watch that in the next class. You've seen it before? With, uh, with Will Smith? Well, anyway, the pursuit of happiness is when you get to the point to where you're homeless and you're taking care of your kids and all these things. And I can tell you a really good story, but I just don't have time. But anyway, you're able to bounce back from a difficult situation, regardless of how rough and how bad it is. Even, you know, we have kids that don't have homes that are bouncing around from place to place, things like that. But despite negative circumstances, they're able to overcome and still be successful in life. Okay? So... I'm not going to go through too much of this. Uh, I don't need to go through these right here. Blah, blah, blah. I don't need this. I don't think I need any of these. Um, yeah, let's do this right here. Um, resiliency. Um, when you are involved in extra, extracurricular activities, when your team is so important, that's what we always want you to try out. Be a part of something. It feels good when you're on a what? When you're on a team, when you're a part of something, whether it's a team at school, whether you've got friends to hang out with, positive friends, it feels good to be a part of something. It feels good to say, yeah, every now and then, you know? What do you think? It feels good to celebrate, to cheer, to see somebody smile, to make somebody else smile, to be a part of something. Because we are humans and we need that human connection, okay? Um, make a commitment to learning, okay? It says reading. Reading is so good. Some kids just don't like to read, okay? Um, but reading is a really good place to go, okay? Because when you read, you go somewhere. Where wherever you're reading, whatever's in that book, you're kind of going where that book is taking you. But you got to learn how to expand this thinking. Okay, stand up for your beliefs and refuse to act against your values. Be honest with yourself and others. And that's where we fail sometimes, being honest and being true to you. In the video, um, Out of the Darkness, that's the one thing she did say, is that she had to be honest with herself. She had to be honest with herself, and that's what she wasn't doing, okay? A lot of times we lie to ourselves, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, when you're not okay, okay? And you know that you're not okay, okay? Resist negative peer pressure and avoid dangerous situations. We talked about that before. Um, learning from other people, developing a sense of purpose developing a sense of purpose and developing a positive outlook on your future. There is light at the end of the what? At the end of the tunnel. There's always light. It's just a matter of you going toward the light. Do you want to get there? Sometimes you want to get there, you just don't know how. Okay? So develop a positive outlook on your future. Okay? A resilient teen, a resilient person is somebody that goes through difficult times you don't stay there. It's like being that reactive person. You respond and you react. You bounce back from whatever has knocked you down. Does that make sense?